Thank you, Jesus. It is. It's different now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Something seems to be strange about what's going on, so we are, I'm just going to read us a little scripture and believe the Lord to help us. Thank you, Jesus. In Psalm 63, it says, Oh God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth Thee for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and a thirsty land where no water is. To see Thy power and Thy glory, so as I have seen Thee in the sanctuary. Because Thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise Thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Oh, have you ever had joyful lips? It's time for you to get some. Get some joyful lips. Let the Lord just put joy on your lips so you can praise Him with them. Hallelujah. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Oh, yes, Lord. Here I come. Ready or not. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes you need to follow hard after the Lord and let Him feel you and hear you behind Him. When, they, when He was uh, pursued by those disciples of John, He turned around and said, What, whom, what do you seek? What are you wanting? And they said, we want to know where you dwell, where you live. And he said, come and see. Hallelujah. You can follow hard after him and he turn around and look at you and wonder what you're after him for. What are we after you for tonight, Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. We're after for blessings, for help, for, oh, hallelujah, just fellowship with you tonight. To serve you and to love you and to be with you. Oh, be with you. to talk to my leader to my heart. Be with us tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right, that right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. We're looking for your power in the sanctuary tonight, Father. We're looking for your power to move on us, God. Move on everyone at home tonight. Everyone that's watching us from their house, their couch, or in their living room, or in their kitchen. Lord, we ask you to move on. Everyone. Let them feel the anointing of the Lord coming right to them. Hallelujah from heaven. It doesn't even have to come through this place. Just through it from heaven right into them. We claim victory in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's different now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to sing an old song my mom used to sing. Hallelujah. It's called Heaven Will Surely Be Worth It All. Another one. She used to do it. It's different now, too. Uh, let's do it in F. Amen. Heaven will surely be worth it all. Think about it. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
We're going to receive our prayer request tonight. Pray. Hallelujah. We've got a really good um, praise report today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Yvonne, she was in the hospital about a month ago, wasn't it? Or was it longer? Maybe a month ago. Terrible pain. And uh, the Lord touched her. So she got her te all her tests back and they didn't find anything but a little bit of inflammation. So glory to God. He has touched her and healed her. We are so thankful for his healing touch. You know, we he heals. He does. If you're out there in terrible pain or you've got COVID or or there's something really scaring you that in your body about your health. We're going to believe the Lord tonight that what he can do, he will do for you. Glory to God. I, I got a request on the, on the comments for a couple that has COVID. And we're praying that God will heal their bodies and take, just bring them, take, bring them right through it. Hallelujah. Without anything still hanging on. And we want, I want him to do that with brother and sister Wooten. They both need that touch from his hand tonight. Hallelujah. And others that have COVID, glory to God. We claim victory. Just asking God to help you to come right through it. Praise the Lord. He can take care of it for you. He can help you. And oh, glory to God. He just wants us to believe in him and believe that he will do it. And we do believe it tonight. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else got a prayer request tonight. Or somebody. Thank you. Got one. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember, Loria, she is uh, tested positive for COVID. She's not really very sick, but she has a bad cold. Please remember her. Remember that the Lord will keep us all safe. That's why we're remote yeah. tonight. Yeah. Um, remember Angela Peoples that's come and visit us. Her father is in the hospital still with COVID and her mom's home needing constant care. And she's now gotten COVID. So they all really need the Lord. They also are living in the town that was flattened by the tornadoes, the recent tornadoes, so it's hard to get supplies and things like that. They're, they're safe, and their home is safe, but it's it's a hard time to be sick. So please remember uh, the people's family. Remember Cherie, and uh, remember Don. His back is out tonight, that the Lord would heal him completely. Amen. I'd like for y'all to remember my Aunt Ollie Ann. She's a... Um, got several things that the Lord needs to heal. She wants to go on living and be a blessing. And she is a blessing to me, a great blessing. She's a blessing to others. Just remember her. Remember the Wooten family. They, uh, their brother Wooten's family lost his nephew. Pray for them about their grief. The Lord would help them. Um, praise the Lord. Somebody else tonight? Anybody else? Hallelujah. Remember Nana and her family. Remember all of our church family and Amen. their requests. Amen. So we'll just lump those in with all of them on Facebook and YouTube and, and uh, asking God to move tonight in every life. Every life. You know, it's He's God. It's nothing too hard for Him to look at every one of you and know every one of your needs. He's just so powerful and wonderful. So we're going to go to him tonight and we're going to ask him to meet every need. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like for y'all to remember Brother Michael's brothers and sisters and my brothers and sisters, all of them to be saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Y'all remember that? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anything else? Okay, let's go to prayer.
You're going to testify of it. That's when I got healed. Glory to God. Somebody was believing for me. And oh, hallelujah, my healing began to come. Glory to God. I thank you for that healing tonight. Praise the living God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He wants us to believe Him. Glory to God. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. He changes not. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, everything is different. Everything is different in this world, but Jesus is not different. No, He's the same. Praise God for being the same. Hallelujah. That one that loved us enough to die for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Sister Lee and Sister Laney. Y'all sing one for us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
musician. Praise God for help. Hallelujah. I feel that help tonight. He's given it to us. Glory to God. What good help the Lord gives us every time we come to church, doesn't he? Hallelujah, Jesus. It reminds me of them trying to carry the ark into Jerusalem. And when they made those paces, however many paces it was, they sacrificed something. And all of a sudden, the Lord began to help them. Hallelujah. He began to help them to bring that ark into Jerusalem. Whoa! You can imagine them stepping higher. And oh, glory to God. Maybe they didn't even have to touch the ground sometimes. Right. Glory to God because the Lord was helping them. And he's helping us tonight. I feel him helping us. Praise God. He's helping you out there. I don't know where you are or what's going on with you, but I believe God is helping you. I can feel it. I can feel him helping you. Oh, he's so precious. He's so wonderful. You know, sometimes we feel so insignificant and God just comes on us and helps us. Hallelujah. Praise God. He doesn't care if we're insignificant. In fact, that makes it easier for him to use when we're, we don't think we're anything. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean we don't have faith in Him. It just means we not don't think too much of ourselves. But we think a lot of Him. We just wish and hope that He would use us. Glory to God. That He would let us feel the power of God moving through us and helping others. Oh, praise God. I remember Brother Don the other night was talking about all, of, all we could do for others. Glory to God. Now, all this week I've remembered Him using that word others. Others. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn in the Bible tonight to 1 John 4 and 4b. If you want to turn there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I haven't heard this portion of Scripture in a long time. When I was uh, younger, uh, somebody named Oral Roberts used to use this, uh, this Scripture all the time. But it's almost like nobody wants to use it anymore. I don't know why. But it's a wonderful scripture, and it's in verse 4 of 1 John 4. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And this is the part I wanted to preach tonight. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. <laughs> Whoa! What a powerful scripture! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Oh, do we want to believe that or do we want that to be one of them hidden scriptures that nobody brings up anymore? Come on. No, no, we got to bring that scripture up because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Like I said, we may feel very insignificant, but what's in us is not insignificant. Oh, no. Hallelujah. What's in us is great, greater than what's in the world. Right. In our little uh, mortal human bodies, God is so great. He is so great. Glory to God. It's a wonder it doesn't tear us to pieces. But He's made a way. He's made a way for the, the death of Jesus Christ to bring His Spirit into our lives and help us. He knew what it was going to take to be able to abide in us. That's why He sent us Emmanuel. Glory to God. God with us. He knew that Jesus could get the job done. And He's getting the job done in me. Is He getting it done in you? Yes, is He yes. greater in you than He that is in the world? Yes, yes, He is. That's what the Scripture says. Glory to God. In the next ver the next chapter it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Right. Who is He that overcometh the world? But he that believed that Jesus believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. When you begin believing that Jesus is the Son of God and you repent of your sins and you ask Jesus to come into your heart, He comes into your heart crying, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. He begins to love God through our just mortal bodies. He begins to love God through us. People wonder, well, why do you shout? Why do you worship God like you do? Because God is in me. Right. <laughs> what am I supposed to be? Just a normal, a regular person after God enters into my life? Oh, no, I can't do it. Hallelujah. Oh, you say like putting fire under a pressure cooker and the lid's oh. all attached. Oh, I mean, it's got to escape somehow. It's going to escape through my mouth. It's going to escape through my arms and through my hands and through my feet. It's going to escape because it's great. Right. It's greater than he that's in the world. This that is in me. Glory to 
to God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. In verse chapter 12 and verse 11 of Revelation, it says, And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. God will give you an experience with Him that will cause you to love Him more than you love your own life. It will cause you to love Him in such a way because you know that I could not have overcome anything without the blood of the Lamb. Right. I'd still be out there sinning. I'd still be out there trying to be the other fella. I'd still be out there trying to look like all the other movie stars that's walking around. I'd still be out there acting like the world and doing, well, getting a tattoo here and a tattoo there. Oh, I would still be trying to make all the money there is to make. I'm telling you, I'd be still out there in the world trying somehow to be a success as far as the world is concerned. But no, He gave us, gave us His blood. And when I said, Lord, I'm sorry, and He gave me His blood, He put His blood on me. I, he showed me how to overcome. Mm. And be a different creature, a different person, a new creature. Oh, I'm in Christ. I'm a new creature. And this new creature knows how to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. And He's teaching me to love not my life unto the death. He's teaching me to love Him more. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm learning. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. God wants you to realize when you have Him in your life, Bill, He's greater than who's in the world and what that that's in the world. Hallelujah. As long as you focus on the world, you're not going to be able to know that one that's greater in your soul. But you get your eyes off the world and you begin to look for the one that's greater. Hallelujah. You know, in first, Second Peter 3 and 9, he said, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing that any should perish. We're living in 2021, almost ready to get to be 2022, and that scripture is still real. Yes. God is not slack concerning His promises. Some count men count slackness. In other words, I know I've promised it for my son to come back. I know that I promise for the day of the Lord to come. I know that the end times are right upon us. I'm not slack concerning that promise. But I'm telling you this. I'm long suffering. Hallelujah. Because of, of what I feel about you and you and you and you. I don't want you to perish. I want you to come to repentance. Right. I want you to be saved. <laughs> When I think about Methuselah, his name meant when it, when I die, it will come. And then that the flood, oh, people they think God just delighted in in killing people. He delighted in in pouring out his wrath. In the Old Testament, it seemed like he just they just think he delighted in it. But you can look, and when you read the Old Testament, it, it goes over years and years and years before you, he ever pours out his wrath. Right. He's Long suffering, long suffering. And before the flood came, he had Methuselah as a sign. And Methuselah happens to be the man that lived the longest on this earth. In other words, God was wanting in that preaching that Noah was doing. He was wanting somebody to come and say, let me in the ark with you. But nobody did. But he wanted somebody to. And when it finally came the day, that Methuselah died. That's when the flood came. Because he died the same year of the flood. And it's proven. But let me tell you. Glory to God. It wasn't God's will for any of them to perish. It's not His will for you to perish. If you're out there lost and you're listening to me preach. I want you to understand. That God is waiting upon you. He's waiting for you. He wants you to turn your life over to Him so He can take you to heaven. We want you to take, He wants to take you with Him when Jesus comes. He wants you to be part of His bride. He wants to see you around His throne. He wants you to be saved. Oh, glory to God. He's, he's not slack concerning His promise about the end times. 
but he is long suffering to usward. Yes. He's long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why are you preaching that, Sister Linda? I'm preaching it because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What he gives me to preach, I will preach because he is great in me. Come on. Woo! He has to turn to. He's great in me. And he'll be great in you because he's great. Right. If he's in you, you've got somebody great. Greater than who's in the world. Hallelujah. Look in Luke, uh, Psalm 68. I want you to look right there for a minute with me. Oh, hallelujah. I'm preaching to you this night. I want you to hear this. Praise God. Verse 34. Hallelujah. It says, Ascribe ye strength unto God. Oh, hallelujah. Ascribe ye strength unto God. His excellency is over Israel and His strength is in the clouds. Oh, praise God. We put God way off from us, don't we? We put Him way up in heaven where His strength is whoa, far away. Because it's fearful. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. Hallelujah. So we put God way off. But God doesn't want us to put Him way off. He wants us to ascribe ye strength unto God. He wants you to say, my God is a strong God. He is strong. His excellency is over Israel. And his strength is in the clouds. Oh God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. So that strong God that we're serving. That strong God that's made it all. That's created it all. That's given us his love. Hallelujah. His mercy and his kindness and his goodness. To, oh, give us and been long suffering to us word. He offers the love of his son. He offers the salvation of his son. And he's terrible of, out of his holy places. But we are only seeing his mercy and his kindness. And he's willing for you to come to him in that gentle, loving, long suffering kindness. He's allowing you to come and repent of your sins and be saved. He wants that so badly. But I'm going to tell you something. When you are saved, he's going to give strength and power to you. <laughs> You're not going to be weak. You're not going to be insignificant in his sight. You may be to the world. They may look at you and scorn you and say, what happened to him or what happened to her? They may scorn you while you go through that great fight of afflictions, changing from a, a child of the world to a child of God. You may be scorned, but I'm going to tell you something. What he's doing is giving strength and power unto you. He's causing you to be sanctified and made for the master's use so his strength can go through you in such a way that everybody will be helped around you. Right. Oh, glory to God. God doesn't want you to just give up and say, oh, I could never be saved. No, you can be saved. You can be sanctified. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And you can have the strength and power of God in your life to help others. Glory to God. Because greater is He that's going to be in you than He that is in the world. When you watch those YouTube things, Bill, and you see how their foolishness is, and you know it's foolishness, when you see that, I want you to say in your heart, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We don't have to say, oh, they're high up in the world. They're politicians, or they're, they're uh, presidents, or they're uh, senators, and they're high up. You don't have to say any of that. You have to say, are they saved? And if they're not saved, they're outside of that greatness that God is. Because He's greater than anything or anybody in this world. Hallelujah. Let's look in uh, Luke chapter 10. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to preach it to you tonight. And the 70 returned, verse 17, again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They were amazed at how great God was in them. They were amazed. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Was that just for the disciples in that day? No. That was for us too. He gives unto us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. Because He's greater than what's in the world. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In other words, don't get your eyes on the power. Don't get your eyes on who you are. Come on. Get your eyes on how I've rescued you and caused your name to be written in heaven. Just keep your eye on that and realize if it hadn't been for the salvation of the Lord, you'd be down there with all the rest of those that don't know nothing about God and are lost and are going to be lost and go to hell. You you can be in the same situation. Just rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Hallelujah. He's given it to babes. Babes. Oh, that house city refuge, church of God, they shout all over the place. They jerk and they uh, lose sight of everything and, and just act like they're out of it. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Praise God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't mind being a babe. I don't mind being somebody that God can move on whenever he feels like it. I don't mind being that. Because he has passed over the wise and the prudent. And he has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Let that sink down, Bill, right down into your brain, into your heart, into your mind. Let you understand that although the world, and with all of its flair, and all of its uh, uh, possessions, and all of its supposed wisdom, Sister Laney, let it sink down deep in you, that no matter what anybody tells you about holiness, about living for God in a separated manner and come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will be a God unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters. Don't ever forget that He said this. He said, Many have desired to think, see the things that you have seen and not seen them. And to hear those things that you have heard and not heard them. They've not had the opportunity to be Touched and moved by God that you have. Hallelujah. So realize, glory to God, that greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Hallelujah. He expects us to stand for His Word because He's greater. He can, he can help us to stand. Right. Right. We don't ever have to bow down and say, well, I guess. I guess he didn't really mean that or he didn't really want me to do that. Oh, no. You can say God's word will stand. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That's when they changed the Bible. They've changed it so you know that they're not telling you the truth. When they've changed the Bible, you can stand up and say that is not right because God said his words 
will not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And they have in some of those Bibles. You need to be careful and get you the authorized King James Bible because when it called it authorized all over the world, it's called authorized. What does that mean? It means the author says, that's my word. That's what I wrote. And when he wrote it, hallelujah, he settled it in heaven. That's what the Bible says. Forever, O oh Lord, God, thy word is settled in heaven. Right. Hallelujah. We don't have any debate. There's no debate in heaven where the first verse said, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Or did he say heavens? Uh-uh. He said heaven. And if you read every one of those other versions and it'll say heavens. Uh-oh, something's happened. Something's happened. You read in Matthew chapter 1 and it says this is the book of the genealogy of, the, of Jesus Christ. Uh-uh, that's wrong. You read them, read it, read it. The ge genealogy, the only one that says it right is the authorized King James Bible that says the generation. And it is the book of the generation. The others are telling you wrong because it's only one chapter that gives the genealogy. The whole book tells you about all the people that lived in Jesus' time, which is the generation. So it's wrong. Right. And I'm just telling you, God doesn't have to change. His word doesn't have to change. They can say, oh, there's this, that, and the other that's wrong with it, and we've got to correct it. Be careful and don't listen to them for the re simple reason they don't understand. They don't understand because their eyes are not enlightened by God. And he said he's revealed these things unto babes and not given them to the wise and the prudent. And that's what's happened in this world. The wise and the prudent feel like they can take over the administration of God's word. But they're wrong. It's the babes that are going to hold on to his truth and are going to dispense his truth knowing that God is greater in them than, he is, than the world out there and what the world has. God is greater. Right. God is greater. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now I was looking. I finished that. I said, you, For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Sister Linda, you're in this tiny little church. Do you think that you are more important than prophets and kings? I'm talking about greater is he that is in me right. than he that is in the world. I'm not talking about me being great. I'm talking about him being great. And he is. Hallelujah. Look in Mark 15 and 29. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Mark 15 and 29. Jesus talking. Or Jesus is on the cross and they, other people are talking. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroys the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. <laughs> don't expect people to be glad that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't expect him to be glad about it. They're not glad about it. In fact, they're going to blaspheme him. They're going to criticize him. They're going to mock you. They're going to be against you. Don't expect the people of this world to appreciate that you've got something greater in you than they have. They won't. They won't appreciate it. And they'll want to see some miracle. Well, if you've got God in your life, let me see some miracle. Let me see some miracle. If I don't see a miracle, I can say anything I want against Him because He ain't real. You ever heard that? I heard it a few weeks ago. He ain't real. 
Let him prove himself. But you know what the Bible says? We just read it. He reveals himself unto babes. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 1. Look there. Hallelujah. See, God doesn't set about proving himself to the blasphemers. Come on. You can pray for him and maybe he will. I'm praying for one. Come on. And I'm praying he will. Because I love him. But in 1 Corinthians 1 and 21, it says, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. People that are set on unbelief, those people that were beneath the cross, deriding Christ, did he come down to prove it, Brother Bill? No. Could he have? He could have, but he wasn't going. He wasn't trying to prove it to them, because they did not believe. He said, "It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe." For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man. <laughs> okay, tell me about the foolishness of God, Laney. <laughs> is it foolish for God to love me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it <is> seems foolish. <laughs> it's not foolish to him. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If he was going to choose, if he was going to choose somebody. You know, I mean, <laughs> well, well, listen to me, what it says. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, nor many, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in His presence. <sighs> Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. It makes you so glad that you can even be glad to be called foolish. Right. Whoa. I must be one of them weak things. Come on. Well, I was. I tried to take my own life before God saved me. Right. I wasn't very strong. No. Foolish things. I was so foolish as to listen to what the devil had to say about me. That was foolishness. But God helped me to get over that and to learn His ways. Hallelujah. I wasn't wise. I wasn't strong. I was weak. I was base. I was despised, but God has chosen that. He chose that and things which are not to bring to know things that are. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Ascribe ye strength unto God. Oh my. God, you are so strong. Oh, you'll see me through this message. You'll see me through the days after it when the devil will try to attack me. You'll see me through it. You're so strong. You won't let the devil hinder me. You'll keep me. You'll help me. You'll be with me. You're so strong. Let's grab his strength like a God. Give him strength. Show him. You believe in his might. You believe in his strength towards you. There's nothing he can't do. Right. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God was greater in David. Was he? Was he greater in David than Goliath was? Oh. David was just a young boy. Goliath was bigger than all of the men out there on the field that were going to fight. He was the giant. He was well uh, experienced in killing men. And killing big, strong, powerful men so that Saul shook in his boots and didn't want to go fight him. But David was no match for him. But greater was God in David than the, than the world.
world that Goliath had in him. Goliath didn't have any strength compared to what David had because right. David had God in him. Right. God was greater in Daniel. Those lines couldn't take a bite, could they? No. God was greater in Peter. They couldn't cut his head off because the angel was rescuing him before that ever happened. Right. God was greater in Jesus Christ. Yes. He died on the cross and three days later he rose again. God gave him power to die and power to take his life up again. God was greater in Moses. He was greater. Moses could stand up there and stretch his rod out over the sea and the sea part. God was greater in Rahab. She didn't have to perish with all of them in Jericho. Her whole family walked out of that house home and sound and she became a matriarch in Israel and became uh, one of the grandmothers of Jesus Christ. Uh, let me tell you, God was greater in her. She was a harlot. God was greater in her. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, God was greater in them than the fire of the fire of that hot furnace. It was heated seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And those men that threw him in, threw them in, died when they tried to throw him in. But God was greater in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, glory to God. God was greater in Paul over and over. They stoned him and left him for death. He got up from there and walked off and Kept on preaching the gospel. God was greater in me. What? You put yourself in the midst of all of them? I certainly do. Right. Because they're not living in 2021. Right. And I am. Right. They cannot help anybody in this time except if you read about them in the Bible and what they once did. But I can do something different now. Yeah. I can preach this word to you tonight. Yeah. And you can feel the power of God showing you that if you put him, oh glory to God, if you put the ever of your all on the altar on. and you ask God to come into your heart, then you can say God is greater in me than who and whatever is in the world. And I can live for God. I can live holy. I can live true. I can live by the word. I can do the things that God wants me to do. And I don't have to be afraid. Right. Oh yeah, Zechariah said it. Oh, he did. That we'd live in holiness and righteousness without fear all the days of our lives because of the day spring that God sent from on high. Glory to God. He's got help. He's got help. He's great. God is greater. God is greater in you. He's greater in you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've got to be willing to say, God, you're greater. I'm nothing. I'm weak. I'm base. I'm foolish. But you are not. You are great in me. You are great in me. Hallelujah. If you turn to second chapter of 1 Corinthians, it says this. Nine. <laughs> but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The princes of this world. I don't know that any one of them watches the Highland City Refuge, Church of God, Wednesday night service. Probably not. If you do, will you comment? <laughs> will you say, I'm one of the princes of the world, of this world, and I heard you. <laughs> Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. But for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even, the, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, 
that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. See, he starts out with a base, foolish, low, weak vessel. And he begins to open their minds, our minds, up to the things of the Spirit of God. As he opens up our minds, hallelujah, as he gives us the Spirit of God, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. He begins to open our minds to the things that God freely gives us. And so, as we go along, instead of always feeling foolish and weak and base, we begin to feel the power of God. We begin to look for it to manifest itself when we be obedient to Him. When we lay our hands on somebody and we pray for them. When I prayed tonight, I could not lay my hand on you, but I believed when I prayed. Just like I believed for Sister Yvonne when I went to that hospital and her husband believed with me. Yes, amen. And you believed with me and I believed with you. Right. And I believe that God moved in you to, tonight. Yes, amen. Just like I believed and the, the things of the Spirit are revealed to us though we were once weak and base oh, and foolish. For cause greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. God is greater. God is greater than the devil. The devil will threaten you. You better not get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll lose every one of your friends and every one of your family. Now, you need to decide right now that God is greater than the devil. Right. You need to decide it. God is greater than the devil. I can pray for somebody that doesn't love God at all. And he'll get saved. And he'll get sanctified. And he'll get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And he'll preach the gospel for the rest of his life. Yes. He did. Yes, he did. He did. Yes, he did. That was my husband. God is greater than the devil. And the devil will tell me. Michael, 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 all you think about is Michael. Yep, I wanted him saved. I told the Lord, he'll love you when he's saved. And he certainly did. Hallelujah, God is greater than man's wisdom. God is greater. That God that's in you is greater than man's wisdom. Man's wisdom will say, well, it doesn't matter what Bible you read. They're all got the Word of God in them. Oh. God is greater than any opposition. It doesn't matter what comes against you. The God that is in you is greater than that. God is greater than our unbelief. Yes. God is greater. Have you ever prayed for somebody and really didn't think that God had done a thing? And the next thing you know it, they're talking about, man, she just laid her hand on my back and, and my ribs were broken and they're not broken anymore. And you're going, what? I didn't feel a thing. I didn't know that happened. God is greater than our unbelief. God that is in us is greater. Hallelujah. Okay, one more chapter. Uh, I'm going to tell you, not the whole chapter. I just want you to go there. Isaiah 25. And we're going to quit. Isaiah 25. Verse 1 says, O Lord, 
Thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city and heap. Of a de defense city a ruin. A palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Where's that? It's Babylon. They don't. They won't build on Babylon. People won't even spend the night on Babylon. That's what I've read or heard. That they won't even camp on Babylon. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor. A strength to the needy in his distress. A refuge from the storm. A shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves. Lee. <laughs> that means the meadow, right? Right. Of fat things full of marrow, wines on the leaves, well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. The rebuke of his people. So even though God is greater in you. The world will rebuke you. The world will turn upon you. And the world will scorn you. But there's going to come a day that God's going to wipe away all the tears from off your face. And he's going to take away the root rebuke from off all the earth. The rebuke of his people. For the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. This is our God. This is our God. He that is in me. We have waited for him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad. And rejoice in his salvation. Tonight. I hope I've given you reason to be glad and rejoice. That greater is he. That is in us. Than he that is in the world. You don't have to fear. You don't have to fear. The devil wants you to. Feel like you've got to look and act. And be just like everybody else in the world. Why would you want to do that? about greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I.